welcome to the lab this week. All right, give him a hand, give him a hand, zip lock in the body bag. <laughs> All right, welcome to the show this week. I'm your host, I'm Chris Carr. Welcome to Blab. Uh, today, it's kind of like, as you can tell, it's going to be a mellow blab. We're going to have a great time. We're going to do a couple of things. Uh, we got, of course, the black in the body bags, and then uh, give them a nice round of applause. Uh, all right. Mitch, what is up with the bass, man? You're all right. I can dig that. I can dig that. Okay. Now, our first guest, we're going to get right into the show because we got a lot of music. We got a lot of things to cover today. So I would like to introduce Dave Bainey. Welcome, welcome to the show. Let's Hi, give Dave a hand. Come right on over. You can get your own theme music. It was just right. a small little boost. Here we go. We'll go ahead and thank you here. This is my favorite part of the show. It really is. Yeah, I like it too. <laughs> I just like the way it feels. <laughs> That's so lavalier. Yeah. Okay, well, Dave, you really, I mean, I was reading over some of the things that I've seen about you, and it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, you started out, you got really interested in it when you were 12, yeah. and you were playing professionally by 14. Yeah. And that is just absolutely amazing. I mean, I was at home, and actually I still am, you know, getting sugar highs by eating Fruity Pebbles and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And you, want, you know what you wanted to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that, to me, that is absolutely amazing. So, I mean, who, who influenced you to get started? How did, it all, how did this all begin? Well, it all started because... Uh, I guess that uh, family lineage thing, you know, Grandpa mm -hmm. played and my dad was a professional musician and there was a bass in one corner of the house and a guitar in the other corner and, and my brother picked up the bass, I picked up the guitar and, Started and, uh, and Dad showed me a few <laughs> chords and showed John a few bass notes and off we went. And but the important thing, there was really no pressure uh, no. to go into music and, and do some Not at all. If you wanted to, fine. That's absolutely amazing because you know you find in, you know when the, when you got a heritage thing and it goes from one generation to another generation, kind of sometimes they end up pushing it out. But, but you know yeah. it had its other side too, Chris, because uh -oh. <laughs> my, my dad never told me the business could be hard too. Uh -huh. You know, he just said, "Oh, sure, you want to play guitar for a living? It. Fine." Go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's actually a story when you were 12. You went. He took you. Just or 14. 14. He just took you out to the, the clubs and he, and yeah. he saw a couple of. And, yeah, he, uh, I had more or less been into rock and roll to get started, but, uh, and after a couple of years, uh, he said, get in the car, and he took me up to hear this uh, jazz quartet, and they had a, the car. Yeah, <laughs> they had a jazz guitar player. <laughs> get in the car. They had this great jazz guitar player, and my, I remember my jaw just dropping down, and I said, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. That's absolutely amazing. And also, you were teaching at the age of 16, is yeah. that correct? Well, where were you teaching at? Well, I started teaching at a, a music store, mm -hmm. and I was even surprised myself. You know, I wondered, am, am I good enough to do this? You right. know, and there were a couple of occasions where I had some pretty hot students, and I'd have to keep them one week ahead of them. You know? <laughs> You're like, okay, we got something for them next week, and yeah. then start working it out. Yeah. But see, that's absolutely amazing because that's a, that's a great gift. Um, a lot of people can do their craft, but it's very difficult to actually teach it. Uh, and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time to do. I love to teach, too. Really? I really do. I like it. You know, a lot of people, people do it, I think, just because they need the money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just get the biggest kick out of watching somebody's light go on, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually develop and everything. That's just yeah. amazing. Uh, then when you were night, you went to the Navy. Yeah. And then uh, you played gigs and stuff before that. And yeah. then you went to the Navy for a while. And then uh, your head man was like, no, man, hey, that guitar crap. It's not playing here. Yeah. We're not doing that here. <laughs> yeah. So then you kind of were, so you still kind of played, though, on, on the side. Yeah. And then they had a little problem with the band. So what happened with yeah, that? Yeah, that was wild. Uh, I was on an aircraft carrier, and uh, it was a small aircraft carrier, and um, they were sort of like the last ones to get anything allotted to them. You know? <laughs> and so uh, the, the fellow who was uh, the officer who was in charge of the band, uh -huh. he was a wild kind of guy, and he came back from partying one night and drove his car off the end of the pier. And, <laughs> And so, you know. He loved what he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing. yeah. I love it so much. The Navy was his life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about anymore. He goes yeah, drive right. off a few beers. So he got canned, and they couldn't get another officer, a band officer, allotted for the ship. Uh -huh. So uh, the chaplain had seen me playing all over the ship, and he's the kind of a guy on a ship that puts things together. Okay. And uh, he came to me and said, uh, hey, I see you playing the guitar all over the ship. He said, do you think you could run the band? And, why not? You know? <laughs> hey, I thought when I was 16, I was pretty pro. When I was 14, I think I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of went with the whole format, or did you kind of jazz it up or anything? Or? <laughs> we would jazz it up some. Uh -huh. it was kind of, we had sort of a marching band format, and mm -hmm. we'd have to play when the band, uh, when the ship came into port and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, can I tell the squeaky story? I oh, tell squeaky. Yeah. Tell you guys are going to like this, squeaky. We uh, had this <laughs> uh, commander on the ship, and um, um, we called him Squeaky. He was a little short guy with a high-pitched voice. Uh -huh. he, he just hated music, it seemed, and hated that band for some reason. You know, no real reason. <laughs> and so he just hated music. He yeah, wasn't a happy man. And every time he he'd come, squeaky. every time he'd come by, he'd give us some crap. You know. And, uh -huh. And so uh, we decided we'd work something out. So we worked it out. So uh, every time he came by, the band would part like Moses parting the waters. Uh -huh. And the cymbal player would come from the back. And just as he walked by, it just <laughs> squeaking. <so. laughs> kind of light up his life a little bit. And but he, he never understood. No, he'd always wonder, I wonder why that cymbal plays every time bah, I go by. I don't understand. <laughs> well, because he just was squeaky. And that was the main thing about him. Yeah. Now, then you also went on the road a little bit after that. Uh, you actually even had your own show yeah. in in uh, uh, Miami, for Ohio. Miami of Ohio. Uh -huh. uh, the university there had a small station, and uh, my <laughs> brother, your friends a little yeah, bit. <laughs> yeah, my brother and I uh, were sort of like a jazz smothers brothers. Uh -huh. It was half jazz and half comedy. Did one of you yell? Kind of fun. Yell? Yeah, did yell. Yell, yell. Yeah, well, no, but you know what? My brother always said, the "Mom never liked either one of us." <laughs> <laughs> the whole family thing. Yeah. So he had the whole family tradition yeah. thing going. But it was kind of neat because we had a whole series of season, you know, on that TV program. Uh -huh. And it was fun to show your friends the TV guide, the Bainey brothers, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and they'd say, well, Channel 20, we don't get Channel 20. I said, well, it's on, you know, it's a small station. But <laughs> I'm in the TV guide, huh? Yeah. yeah I'm in you, a... You're not in the TV guide. That's right. Look at that. <laughs> that's Bainey right there. That's Bainey. That's me. That's me. <laughs> so then you went on to the road after that, and um, yeah. you've been touring for a while. Uh, who are you playing with now? Well, now I play with a, a group called the Swing Tet. It's a festival traveling kind of group. Mm -hmm. And we play all over the world. And um, we record for Delmark Records, who is big in not only the United States, but even bigger in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we get the opportunity to play over there and played in uh, Germany and Australia. And, uh, and we were just disappointed recently. We were supposed to go into China this July, which yeah. is kind of a big, you know, they're making sort of political breakthroughs there. And, Absolutely, yeah. And, it, and the thing fell through, government something. And uh, we were <laughs> disappointed. You know. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is kind yeah. of disappointing. I wanted to play for, you know, like, what, 80 million people with the same hat on. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't single anybody out. Yeah. <laughs> Tim? 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 <laughs> you know, so it gets a little nutty here and there. Yeah. Now, you recorded an album in 89. Yeah. And then what took you so long? Why? I mean, you're just touring around, doing all sorts of well, things? Well, it, it seemed like I was spending my whole life backing everybody else up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you did some commercials and, uh, and some jingles. And, and I think also that underlying it all, I'm a, an outgoing person, but I think inside me, I just didn't feel quite ready. Mm -hmm. And I probably was ready, but didn't feel it, you know, and then... It's just a little natural course. Over yeah, there. in 89, I said, hey, it's time to do my <laughs> own thing. Why not? Uh, guys, let's do an album. Yeah. So, so how long was that? That's still out right now. It came out yeah. again.